Hi, welcome to today's video. So, today we are going to study about REST and RESTful web services. So, I am very excited to start with this topic. So, if you are new here, do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button so that you will get the content delivered first to you. So, let us start with today's class. So, today we are going to study REST. REST is something which I have tried to explore on the web and it is very difficult to find a simplified explanation what REST is. If you will go to the Wikipedia, there is a lot of terminology associated with REST and you end up understanding zero. So, the main thing that I am going to consider here is to simplify the REST and to remove the terminologies or understand them. So, first is that REST is not HTTP. Okay? So, for example, we are making a network call. For example, we are making a network call using HTTP, www.example.com and something. So, REST is not this protocol. Okay? So, first thing is that. So, what is actually a REST? If it is not a protocol like HTTP, then what is actually REST? So, REST is a guideline. Okay? And what this guideline tells us? This guideline tells us that if you will adopt the principles REST provides, then you will be able to build a performant and scalable system on web. Okay? So, if you want to make your web services, web services like your backend for your application okay, or your video streaming server. So, if you want to make them performant and scalable, if you adopt the REST philosophy of this design, how you should architecture your, your backend servers, then it will be performant and scalable. So, how, what are the actually the principles we will understand. Okay? So, first we found that REST is not a protocol and REST is a guideline which we can adopt. Okay? So, web services that is your backend systems that you develop if it is based on the guideline of the rest then it is called restful web services okay so the two terminologies rest and restful so rest is a guideline and restful is the implementation of this guideline okay so if you will see the historical point of view of the rest then it was introduced by Roy Fielding okay, in very early in 2000 and it has been inspired by HTTP design. Okay. So, historically this is a very old architectural principle and it has been inspired by HTTP design. Okay. So, there are a lot of things uh, which does not make sense unless we understand what actually it means. Okay. So, two things are important here rest and restful web services. Okay. So, what is REST? Now, we will try to understand. So, REST is short for representational state transfer. Okay? So, this terminology does not mean anything if you do not understand. Okay? So, what is this actually representational state transfer? Let us understand. Okay? So, you have two major components in your internet infrastructure. You have got the client. Okay, that is the user of your web services and your network of web services. Okay, for example, you have got a lot of servers. In one server, you have some, for example, your streaming videos are there, some servers on which you make authentication. So, you have got a lot of servers and that together make up a service. Okay, so there is client and there is a network of web resources. Okay? Web resources means anything that you can access on the website. So, this is your server. Okay? Now, this client can access the resource on this server. Okay? So, this is the principle of the rest. Okay? What various components come into the terminology, we are going to understand. So, user or the client can access 
anything on your server which we call web resources and to access that web resources first thing we need to identify that resource okay for example you have a database where there is a list of users client and can access a particular user to access that particular user there has to be an identifier to that resource okay each user you can consider as a resource so first thing that you need to specify if you are using http protocol so this way you can define the identifier for your resource okay your domain name user and the id of the user so this identifier will be used by the client to access that resource okay so this is fairly simple now this server stores resources okay and the resource state that is resource one particular configuration or one particular value you can call it as state so this system you can say that this is a virtual state machine okay so what does this mean is that whatever you are storing in your services for example list of users which has got user information so user 1 has got for example name its id and other information so that is one state of that user okay so it has got it can say that you have got a web services which stores resources and have a particular state of that resources okay now this client can access a resource which is at a particular state okay now after that the user of the of the resource can make changes to the state of the resource okay so you can do resource operations and for doing this you can leverage the http protocol and you can use get post and other methods of the http so that you can manipulate or change the resource okay for example this client wants to get user information it will use the get request of the http okay and it will get the resource transferred okay now suppose it wants to update the user name so it can use for example put method of the http so user can access the resource and also make changes to the resource okay so changes will always be made by some consistent method if you are using http the method will be guessed post put etc okay and whenever you do some operation on the resource there will be a change in the application state that is if you update the user information your state of the user will change and this state change will be then stored again in this state machine with the new state that is the way the user has been modified the user will be in a different state now and this changed state will be transferred to the client okay and the transfer will be made in some formatted format for example html xml json etc okay so in short you make your services on the web in such a way that all the resources has a particular state a client can access the resources at a particular state using a resource identifier it can make changes to the resource using http method and that results in the state transition of the the state of the user you are storing and the next resource goes into the next state which is transferred back to the client in some format okay so now you understood that what is this state and how this is being transferred back and what is this representational so basically the state which server has for user for example the server stores the user in the database for example it uses mongodb so it has a particular 
way of keeping the state. What client is getting is a, for example, a JSON response of the user. Okay, user information is there. So, what user is getting is the state, but it is not the act the way the server is storing the state, but a representation of that state in some other format. So, this is what means by representational. Okay. So now we understood that REST, what things make the REST architecture and what terminology and the principles are there in the REST. Okay? So now we are going to understand that what is actually a RESTful web services. Now to have your web services that is your backend servers, the system you have built so that a client can connect and watch videos or access photos or web pages. So that system to be called as RESTful web services, it has to add either to the compliance of the architectural constraint that is imposed by the REST. Okay? So we saw what components were there in the REST. Now for your web services, in order for those component to work, in a fashion that it should be called as restful, then it should adhere to the architectural constraints. Okay? So REST actually is a is a basically a architecture which imposes constraints. Okay? So what are the constraints that must be followed for by your web services so that we can call it as REST or RESTful services. Okay? Now, First is the uniform interface. It means that uh, your resource is there on your web server and a client can access that. So in order to access the resource or make changes to the resources, it should have a uniform interface. For example, if you are using HTTP protocol, so you have to use for example, get methods. You can decide. Okay? So REST does not say that how this architecture will be designed. It says that your architecture should have these properties. Okay? So it is up to you to decide that how you are going to design your system so that you can achieve this. Okay? For example, I am going to decide that my interface for accessing any resource without modification through HTTP will be get method. So I have made this decision and this is called creating a uniform interface. It means that suppose I give a client that whenever you want to access a user, make a GET request to the endpoint. Okay? So that client will be able to figure out that what other APIs it should call. Okay? So it is a type, you can say that you are giving a language which is uniform to the client. Okay? So this is uniform interface constraint. Next is your client and server. So, the rest says that if your web services is restful, you should differentiate clearly between client and server. Okay? So, client application will be independent, your server application will be independent and both can be developed independently without make affecting the other. Okay? For example, you have server A running on for example, your some frame using for example MongoDB, you can migrate to MySQL for example, it does not affect your client. So your server should be independent of the client and vice versa. So this is your client server constraint. Next is an important constraint that is stateless. Okay? What stateless means that your server will not store any client context between request. Suppose a client for example, ask for login, okay? it makes a call. Now, it makes the another call to edit its information. So server will not store that this client has now logged in and the same client is now trying to access the resource. Okay? So server will not store any client context between request. Okay? So, how can, uh, for example, you want to restrict that this resource is for the user and user should only access this resource. So in order to make this 
system work for this case client will manage the state okay so for example client will call the server to login server can provide for example some information like token and client will keep this token that is it will maintain the state and whenever it has to call for some other resource so all the information required to access that resource for example the token is required then it will send to the server okay so this is meaning meaning of stateless all the state of the client will be at the client ends only now next is cacheable so your web resources whenever applicable should apply caching okay should declare that this resource is cacheable whenever applicable so caching can be done at the client side for example you access a web page for example so web browser can cache it and it can also be cached at the server side so that you don't have to process that request again and again now this caching will enable that your client for example can have the resource at its end and server call is not required okay so this will make this system more performant because client will get access to the data in the caching okay so caching you whenever is is possible you should apply caching okay now fifth is your layered system what is the layered system means so that you should design your backend system in such a way that uh, the servers that are actually creating your services it has nothing to do with the client okay for example you can have all your apis that is your logic that you have written for a client request to process it can be on server a for example all the data you can store in server b you can have for example other servers for authentication okay so whenever a client request for some resource hit some end point it does not know that it is talking to server a or server b only it knows that it is talking to the web services so you should click, uh, create a layered system whenever possible that is the client should not be concerned with how this system has been developed okay now this is an optional uh, constraint that is code on demand okay so you are not required to actually uh, implement this not necessarily what does this mean that you can also return executable code okay what does this mean is that when you access for example some information some web resources you will get a static response for example information of the user that's static okay but for example you want to render some ui in html you can ask the server and it can send you for example a js code that you can use for rendering your ui so this is the optional constraint okay which you can apply in your apis now uh, these six constraint are imposed by the rest okay and if you adhere to the response these six constraints then your web services that you have built can be called as restful okay so uh, the frameworks nowadays that we use for example node.js okay or spring for example so all these have been designed with these constraint so we generally don't tend to actually focus on these concepts like individually in our web application that is this is out of the box but we should understand that what actually emphasize that your service is a restful okay so that you can appreciate the system which you are working on okay so i hope uh, you must have understood about rest and restful web services and next time when somebody asks you you will be able to answer that what actually rest is so if you like this video hit the like button and if you have any queries anything you want to ask you can put in the comment section so i'll see you in the next video till then take care